You know, ladies and gentlemen, if you grew up in the 1970s, game shows were a big part of your everyday uh, daytime or late afternoon viewing pleasure. In New Brunswick, the uh, gong show, which probably one of the most popular strange game shows in the 1970s, was shown a little bit after we used to get home from school in that 4 to 5.30 p.m. window. Now, many, many characters were very popular, Chuck Bears, J.P. Morgan, Jamie Farr, but this guy in his Black History Month, and I wanted to bring him up because not only was he one of the most uh, popular uh, black entertainers ever on the gong show, he was a, a trailblazer for union representation for black people. And in honor of Black History Month, and I'm not making fun of him, I'm not just saying any negative, this is all positive. We're going to talk about the person that made me get up and dance from the time I will first watch a show and even now when I see his videos. God bless him, we miss him. And of course, we're going to be talking about Gene Gene, the dancing machine from <laughs> all versions of the gong show. Now, Eugene Sidney Patton Sr., born April 25th, 1922 in Berkeley, was also known as Gene Patton, but more, more widely known by his stage name, Gene Gene the Dancing Machine. He eventually became a huge television personality dancer. He also worked as a stagehand who was at NBCB Studios in Burbank. Now, Patton, according to the records, was the first African-American member of the International Alliance of Theatrical and Stage Employees, Local 33. So he was a groundbreaker on the union side. Now, Patton's main claim to fame, of course, was for his various appearances on the network's talent search game show, The Gong Show. Now, uh, The Gong Show would basically have a whole bunch of weird uh, performers show up. There could be legitimate ones, or and if you didn't like the performance, you could gong them off stage, or you could give them a score from 1 to 10. Of course, Murray Langston from Bathurst, New Brunswick, became, again, the, the, the biggest outreach uh, hit, but uh, Murray had uh, many, many other roles as well. He did episodic TV as Murray Langston and numerous shows, uh, television shows, did Vegas. But Gene Gene, the dancing machine, nobody thought when he first came on stage, he would be as popular as he was. Now, in addition to his stage duties, Patton was one of several amateur performers who would warm up and entertain the audience during commercial breaks. How host Chuck Bears, who always loved a good laugh, found him so entertaining that he had him dance on the show on air, and he proved so popular that he soon became a recurring act, then an occasional judge. The genial Patton usually wore the same outfit at each time he appeared, which consisted of a green sweater jacket, a flat cap, bell-bottom slacks, and sneakers. Now, before Gene Gene would appear, something would occur. Count Basie's Jumping at the Woodside, a very, very popular, what I call, uh, revelry song, like it makes you get up and dance. Uh, well, they were treated as spontaneous, but in reality, they were always written into the show. After Bears would finish with a certain act, it might be played out, it might be, you know, getting gonged off or, you know, a certain act. The piano player in Milton Le Deleuze's band, the house band, would begin to play in octaves the familiar bass line of the first few bars of Jumping at the Woodside, of course, uh, made popular by Count Basie. And the proceedings would come to immediate halt once Bears heard the music. Bears would usually react with gleeful su surprise, It's me, Gene, the, Gene, the dancing machine! And everybody would start dancing along, including Chuck Bears. Now, Deleuze's arrangement morphed perfectly into Basie's one o'clock jump, at which time Gene showed off his uh, trademark arms red move. Da 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 You know, the hands would go up and a da 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 You know, it makes you want to dance. Along with everyone else in the house. Now, one occasion, J.P. Morgan got so excited, allegedly she took her top off. Not much to show, but that's that's what the video is there being blacked out. Now, Patton's fellow stagehands would toss all manner of things onto the stage when he continued, while he continued to dance. Now, on one occasion, which I saw, not say live, but live to tape, he took a basketball right in the head. 
like really right in the head like a bad pass. Now, but Truly's performances, get this, Patton gained membership in AFRA, AFTRA, which represents actors. Now, Patton performed on the NBC edition of The Gog Show until its cancellation in the summer of 78, and on the weekly syndicated series until it was canceled in 1980. For the final two seasons of the syndicated series, uh, Patton's appearances were scaled back significantly. NBC had evicted The Gong Show from its studios after its cancellation, and production moved to what is now KTLA Studios in L.A. Since Patton was a full-time NBC employee, he remained there. Now, his popularity didn't stop with the Gong Show TV show. He appeared in the Gong Show movie, which was released in 1980 and had a few lines in that film. Now, he also worked as a stagehand on the uh, Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson and appeared on screen at least two episodes. Once on June 20, 84, as part of Johnny's soap opera parody, Johnny refers to him as Buford Stevenson, Sludge Falls' only blues singer, and once on March 12, 86, and when he played a general. Now, he also appeared on November 3rd, 93 episode of Late Night with Conan O'Brien during, during his trademark shuffle during an interview with Bears. Now, he also had a cameo as himself in the film of Bears' uh, life, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, which was based, of course, on Chuck's uh, autobiography, or Chucky Baby's autobiography. Now, unfortunately, uh, he suffered from long-term complications to uh, diabetes and lost both his legs to the complications from disease in 2001. One. He wore a prosthesis and walked for his, with a cane for the final 14 years of his life. Unfortunately, in Pasadena, California, he died, uh, died on March 9, 2015, 82 years old, uh, in a, uh, a good life where everybody got up and danced in respect and in admiration of possibly the most uh, natural dancer in the history of game shows, Gene Gene, the dancing machine. Ladies and gentlemen, just like the unknown comic and all the great performers on the gong show, it's an acquired taste. All in all, it was the quickest 30 minutes of my teenage years watching the gong show and seeing all that craziness on stage. And <laughs> there's, a t there's talk amongst uh, some of my family. People that showed up as judges on the gong shows either were on their way up or on their way down. And J.P. Morgan was just right in the middle, which I think she kind of liked, because she was kind of a little, you know, a little bit, little bit sexual. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's the story of Gigi and her dad's machine during this Black History Month, and I'm totally, totally uh, serious here. When you become the first of anything in something that represents mostly the white community, you're the first black person in a union or any, any reference, he, should, uh, he deserves all recognition. Because it would be with him, he didn't see color, he just saw the dance moves. And ladies and gentlemen, we all miss the gong show in Canada, and sometimes in Canada it feels like a gong show, but sometimes it feels like <laughs> you want to get the big mallet, and when people are acting stupid, hit that gong and start playing Jean Jean's music and just dance the afternoon or that away. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing here with our TV podcast, let us know what a like, comment, or subscribe. Have a good evening. Bye.